All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm sure we're going to have a few late stragglers on the call, but um, in the interest of respecting everyone's time, uh, we want to get started as close to the top of the hour as possible. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, my name is Greg Dario. I am with Via TiVo Group. Um, I recognize a few names on the call. For those of you who are not familiar with us, we are a McCola reseller. We're based in Orange County, California. Uh, we do have technical resources uh, kind of dotted out throughout the country, uh, as well as a client base that uh, is spread out around the country. Uh, we have been, we were founded in 1992, and collectively our team has well over 150 years of cumulative experience um, working in the McCola space. Uh, we do a lot of things. We, in addition to selling the software, we support, we, we develop, we help uh, our clients create custom uh, modules that serve their needs. And one of the things that we like to do to help our customers get the best user experience possible is host these informative webinars. Um, today's topic, as you can see, uh, we're going to be talking about flexibility and screen designer today. We're really lucky to be joined by John Brennan. Uh, John, before joining Intivo, worked uh, with ExactDirect as, uh, in a number of support roles. And since joining us, he's kind of been our, our go-to webinar presenter. So we're really lucky to have John on board. Um, before I pass the mic off to him and get started, I do want to cover a couple of really quick logistical things. We are recording today's webinar. So that recording should be available uh, probably by tomorrow afternoon. Um, if during the presentation, you do have a question that you would like to ask. Um, we, were, we are going to have time at the end for Q&A, but if it, during the presentation something pops up, use the chat feature on the webinar dashboard. I'll be monitoring that throughout the presentation. I'll make sure we cover all those questions as well as at the end, we're going to go ahead and open up everyone's phone lines so they can ask questions directly. Uh, we also have Tim Dysard uh, on the phone with us who uh, will not be doing the main portion of the presentation, but he will also be available for the Q&A portion at the end. Uh, so with that having been said, um, I'm going to go ahead and shut my mouth and let John Brennan take it away, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Very good. Thank you very much, Greg. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's presentation, Unlocking McCullough's Potential with Flexibility. Let's take a little bit of a look at what we're going to be seeing as far as our agenda is concerning today. First of all, we're going to talk a little bit about using Screen Designer. While this is not necessarily the, the biggest part of, of flexibility, what it does is allows us to, to make changes and modify the screens to, the, to suit the interest of our users. And every user can have a different screen if they choose because their jobs may be different. We're going to be working with the OE Order Entry screen today. And if any of you try to, to, to do any modifications with that, you're going to realize there, there's not a lot of room in that screen. But we're going to show you how we can get some things done. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about using flexibility. And what we're going to do is tie flexibility into the screen designer and show how flexibility code can actually get us some additional information and actually process things a little bit differently for us using flexibility. The other thing we're going to do is actually show you how we're actually using uh, flexibility for our eBiz credit card application and show you how that's going to work as well. So we're going to go into a little bit more depth in the flexibility piece. We're also going to talk about extending McCola's functionality. And when we talk about extending McCola's functionality, we're talking about McCola, the, the, the manufacturing, inventory, all, all great products, but sometimes they don't do exactly what you want them to do, and you need to have a little bit more flexibility or a little bit more control. We're going to have a little bit of a conversation about that when we get to that part of the presentation. We're going to have the Q&A portion, and then what's your business issue? And when we get to the end, we're going to have you asking questions about some of the things that we've covered in today's presentation. But also, we're going to ask you, what are the issues that you have? And maybe we can offer some solutions to you, and you can get a hold of us. We'll talk about using Screen Designer. We're going to talk about customize, customizing McCola screens. We're going to talk about streamlining data entry. We're able to hide fields. We're able to set tab orders, et cetera. The idea here is, is that some individuals or some people who are using the software don't really need to see all of the fields. They don't need to tab through all of the fields. All they really need to do is they is enter a few a few items in the order entry screen, for instance, or the item master screen. And then all they want to be able to do is just be able to tab through that as quickly as possible, especially when you're doing bulk data entry. We're able to hide fields so you don't have to look at them and give you a little bit more room on the screen itself. And also set the tab order, tabbing over those fields that that particular individual may not need to see. It also speeds up the, the data entry process. 
you can make an entry field mandatory. So if you don't want someone to skip over something, you want to make sure that they're actually processing that particular field, you can make that entry mandatory. And we're going to show you how you can do that using flexibility. We're able to add a button. And that button can do any number of different things. And uh, we're going to show you how we're going to add buttons. But we're also going to show you how, how to add some code behind those buttons to get it to do something. Next, we're going to turn an entry field into a drop-down list box. Uh, we don't necessarily have one on the order entry screen right now, but we're going to put one in for you and show you how that's going to work. We're going to expose a user-defined entry field to capture additional information. A lot of times people want an email address on the uh, face of the order entry screen. Not a lot of room to put it there, but we'll show you how we can add it. We're going to give you a, a unique entry field beyond those capabilities, and we're going to change the text on the label. And finally, once we've made the modifications, we're going to go in and link resources to the custom screens. When we talk about linking resources to custom screens, we're really talking about creating a custom screen that's available for a, an individual or a group of individuals, and how we, make that, how we make that screen available to them. We're also going to show you just very briefly how we can change the terms on, on a particular item on, on the Macola screen. So we're going to see how that's going to work for us and how we can do that relatively simply or how we can do it in, in a little bit more complex environment. Okay. This is what the screen is going to be working with. I've only added this screen right now so that you're going to know, so that when you get this PowerPoint, if you want the PowerPoint, you get the presentation, you'll be able to see the areas that we're going to change in the default order entry screen. We're going to change the discount percent. We're going to change the second instructions piece. And we're going to add a couple of buttons right underneath the copy build, too. Not going to do anything with this. I just wanted to make sure that if you do get the presentation, you're going to take a look at what it is that we actually changed. Let's go to the screen designer demo and actually open this up. And what we've got right now, and this is just your basic basic uh, basic entry screen. We're going to go to order entry RMA, and we're going to select enter sales orders. Now, there's two places we can do this. The first place we can do it is if we actually went in and selected, and let's do that. Let's just show you where that exists. We go down here to general. We're going to go down to designer. And we're going to select the order entry screen. And we want to do the order entry screen itself. You'll notice that we have a number of different screens that we're able to modify and change. So if I were to open one of these, for instance, I could open up. You can't open up and change Macola, but you can open up some of these other ones. So let's go back there and say we want to do a design on this. So now you're going to see where we're able to move things around and play with things and actually make modifications and changes in this screen. But we're not going to do that here. What we're going to do is we're actually going to close this out. And we're going to go into the order entry, enter orders. And this is the screen we're going to modify. You'll notice we have some icons up here at the top. This is going to be the flexibility icon. So if I have any code behind this screen, this is where I'm going to be able to see it or where I'm going to be able to add it or modify it. We're going to actually click on this icon right here where we're going to customize the screen. Looks remarkably like the one we just saw as far as the custom screen is concerned. A couple of things we want to do. The first thing we want to do is maybe somebody wants to add an email address. So first of all, we have to get rid of this. So if we do a right mouse click, we're going to hide this, and we're going to go back, and we're going to do another right mouse click for special, and we're going to add an entry field. And our entry field. Well, that doesn't look much like an email address, so there are a couple of things we're going to need to do. We're actually going to need to go in here. We're actually going to need to check the properties. I want to make sure that this is, we'll make this, what, 35 characters, and we're going to do auto size. Next thing we want to do is now that we're going to say, OK, now you might want to go in here and say, well, this isn't the literal we want. So we're going to change the text. And we're going to enter custom text. And we're going to say email. And OK. Then we want to do, we're going to realign this just a little bit. And see if that works for us, OK? We can actually move this well, make this a little bit, move this over. There we go. So now stuff is lining up the way it's supposed to. So now we have a new place where we can enter an email address, and we'll be able to have access to that email address when we process uh, process reports, et cetera. Next thing we might want to do is we might want to put in, well, shipping instructions or for a route, for instance. So let's get rid of this one because nobody wants a discount percent. We always want to get retail. 
So we're going to go back here and we're going to hide this one. And go back in, we're going to want to enter another entry field. And we're going to select that. And again, we want to make this entry field. We're going to make this one. I'm uh, going to make this one 34. Characters long, we're going to do the auto size thing again. And select OK. I want to go back in again. I want to change the text on this field. Custom text. And this time we're going to call this route. And we're calling it route because maybe we want to put the route number for this particular delivery. Maybe we want to put it in here. So we're going to move this out just a little bit. There we go. Now, what do we, we want to be able to select something. So we want to be able to add some information to this particular box. So we're going to go down here. We're going to put in values. And you'll notice this box opens up. We're actually able to enter some values. And we're going to add, let's add a couple of route numbers. And we'll put another one in. And we'll put another one in. And now we're done. So we selected OK. You'll notice what that does is that now gives us the ability to pull that down and select the route that we want to include. And again, we haven't done anything real complicated yet. Next thing we want to do is we're actually going to go down here underneath the copy build to, and we're going to add a couple of buttons. So when we add those buttons, we're going to add special, and we're going to add a push button. And select OK. And this one we're going to call. Let's call this one Show Open Items. Oop. Actually, I do need to do this. And I need to do that. And select OK. Now we're going to move this around to get it to where, where it needs to be. Notice that you said, don't you a tad larger than we want it to be? OK. Let's just change the size just a little bit. There we go. And we're going to add one more button. And another button. And we're going to add that button right underneath. And again, like I mentioned earlier on, we really don't have a lot of room on this screen, so it has to be kind of careful about, about where you put things. So we're going to enter the item, enter the button. And we're going to change the text on this one. And this one we're going to call Enter Ship Data. And select OK. And let's move this over a little bit. Again, that's a little bit still a little bit big, so we're going to change the size of that as well. Perfect. So now what we've done is we've added, we've added a, a, just an entry, entry field. We've added an entry field where we can actually have a pull down with, with information in that. Also, we have added the, sl the show option, show open items, and the enter ship data button. Next thing I want to do is I want to save this. So we should be pretty good. Do you want to save the changes we made? Absolutely, we do. And now we're ready. Now we see all the information that we had before. Notice we have the pull down button. We have the five. 514-621. So the other thing I want to point out, as we've done the modification of the screen, but we're also able to go in and make some changes as well as far as the uh, as far as the screens themselves are concerned. Now, there's really two places to do this where we can have customized terms. So we're going to select customized terms here, and what we're able to see is with a search. These are all the standard terms, but we're also able to put a customization in here. We could actually go in and change resources to employees. Some people don't like the concept of, of, of resources. Maybe you want to put content simple, existing, this month, this week, last week. You can change any of these you want simply by going in and say we want to call this employees. We're going to save this. And we're going to close this. And it's telling us that the changes will only take effect after we restarted the software. So let's actually go and do that. You'll notice over here it says resources. And we'll close this. And this. 
go back in here, start up McCola again, and you'll notice now that it says employees. There is an easier way of doing that. I simply click on this and go to customize terms. And now we're seeing that the customized terms that we added in there, we can actually delete that and send it back to where it was. I'm going to save this. Changes will only take effect after restarting the software the same as it did before. One more thing we want to cover as far as as far as the customized screens is concerned. Now that we've now that we've built it, now that we've created it, we actually need to go in and we need to link that resource. Now we've gone ahead and done did a little bit more ahead of time. We're going to go into OEL 101 and tab through, and we're going to select. And I'm on here, so I'm going to take myself off, and I'm going to go and select the one that we just chose. I'm going to save, cancel. I want to save my changes, and I want to go back in to do the same thing and put me into the modified one. Yeah, this one. And move me over here. And I can't tell you why that's not doing that. Unless. Let me try going to your resource screen, John. Got it. That should do it. I hope that does it now. There we go. So now when we go into the order entry RMA screen, we're actually going to see the one that we just, just put in. And you can tell what screen's being used by doing a right mouse click. Notice the group name is now John. And this is the one that was just modified. We've got the route. We have the email. We also have the two buttons for show open items and enter shift data. All right. Now we're going to close this out, and let's get back to the uh, presentation just a little bit. <clears throat> Next thing we want to talk about is using flexibility. We actually want to use flexibility. We didn't necessarily use flexibility in designing the screen or changing the terms, but now we want to add some functionality behind the screen. I'm going to do just a little bit of that and show you where it shows up. We want to be able to capture, store, and retrieve data in excuse me, and from unique entry fields, fields that we might have just added, or different tables that we have. We want to be able, they, they can be accessed using existing Macola table, or you can exist, you can create an existing table and you can use a separate or unique table. Next, we want to make an entry field mandatory and enforce that type of data. So if I want something that before you can say, before you can close out, before you can leave that field, you want to make sure that something is entered in that field, and we'll show you how we're going to be able to do that. And finally, we want to display a non macola screen to capture, store, and retrieve data in a unique entry field. So when we, when we actually added the enter shipping data, we really need to have a little bit of a form or something in there that's going to allow us to capture that information and capture that data. We're going to use the same screen we just played with. So now let's go back and take, take a look at the flexibility piece, all right? I'm going to call that screen up again. And this time, rather than going to the customization, we're actually going to go to the flexibility piece. 
and we're going to open this up. A couple of things I want to point out about this. There's usually we're going to have a Mac form module, and we have a form here to cover the the form piece that we just added. First thing we want to do is I want to go back in and check the check the module piece. And this is basically how the software is going to be working as far as that's concerned. Here's where we address the Mac form piece. And what we just did, we created a form, and we'll see that form in just a second, by adding this, this code at this point, at this code, uh, in flexibility code. And one of the things I should also point out is the code that currently exists here is our credit card code. So what we've done is we've actually inserted the flexibility code that we've just that we we require to use the new stuff that we put in, we've inserted that into the code as well. We're going to come down here just a little bit, and what you're going to notice is we've got three different places where we're processing that information. So let's take a look. This says we want to use Form One. So let's go take a look at what Form One looks like. This is the form we just built using the information over here on the left. This is the form we built, put in the carrier, put in the ship date hold on invoicing, and we're able to have the save and close buttons. Next, we're going to go back to the back form piece and take a look at the next piece that we talked about and the next thing that we did, the next functionality that we added. That's going to be making the route mandatory. You recall that we entered a route number and added a number of different routes that we're able to use, and now what we want to do is we want to make sure that that is mandatory, that we're using, that we actually have to select one of the routes that we've added. And we've done that by adding this piece of flex code. And then we have the open items, and this is where we'd either access the open item table, or in this case, for just for purposes of the demo, we simply put in that the customer has three unpaid invoices totaling $13,000, and we'll take a look at that. So this is where the flexibility code exists, but a little bit further down, we're going to see where we're looking at the terms code. So when we go to talk of terms or payment condition, what the original flex code in this particular screen did was it actually selected, when we selected the terms codes of CC, it actually went in and called another application outside of Macola. So we'll take a look at how that works in just a minute. So let's close this. And we could actually, if we wanted to, let's go in and process a transaction. If we wanted to do that, we could. Let's just see what's next on the slides. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is what the screen looks like. Again, if you get the presentation, the PowerPoint presentation, you'll see where we've actually made those modifications and changes. If you get the video, you won't have to worry about that. I want to talk about extending Macola's functionality using flexibility. Now, we're not going to do a, a, a tremendous amount here. We are going to walk through the eBiz credit card integration just a little bit. But I do want to point out that some of the things that we've done and Tim has done, we've enhanced location security, for instance. One of the things that we were able to do, a customer wanted to be able to, wanted to, be able to restrict inventory transactions to, a specific, to a specific users or, or user groups. We created the functionality that adds the security that they were looking for using the flexibility module. That's not to say that the security doesn't exist the way it does, isn't, isn't good security. However, we were able to enhance that security simply by creating the flexibility code that does turn it into location security. The second one was lot layer costing in a manufacturing environment. Lot layer costing. If I recall, lot layer costing in manufacturing doesn't permit you to use first in, first out. So what was done was uh, we created a, a lot layer costing and manufacturing where we're actually able to use flexibility to create a first in, first out concept as far as the lot layers are concerned. Again, not that the software doesn't work, doesn't work as designed. The enhanced functionality required by the customer, we were able to enable us or we enabled them to get the security that they wanted using flexibility. Finally, the eBiz credit card integration system. This is where we can trigger an external application from within Macola. A pretty complex piece of work. The flexibility allows us to access that information and then pull that information back into, into Macola and put it into tables that we've already added. So now that we're here, let's go actually go and take a look at how that's going to work for us. Come on. There we go.
There we go. So now we have an order entry screen up, and this is the order entry screen that we've just, excuse me, that we've just modified. So we're going to go and create an order. And we're going to process it to customer number 901. And one of the things you've noticed, the terms code in the flexibility code, here's where we put in the CC because CC what drives are, CC as the terms code is what drives the access to that application. If we change it, we're not going to, we're not going to get the information necessary to process as a credit card transaction. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the enter or save key. You notice I didn't put anything in the route center or the, or the route box. Please enter a routing before saving. And remember, we said you, we wanted to be able to require a field being mandatory, so we're going to make that selection here. We're simply going to select this one. And we're going to tab through. And now we're going to create the rest of the order. If we wanted to show enter shipping data, we could hit on this, which would give us the carrier information, the ship date, and the invoice that we already talked about that we showed you when we were actually creating it in flexibility. We're going to close that. We can also click on this. This button will actually show us the customer has three unpaid invoices totaling $13,000. We could actually have an application that would pull up, pull up the customer's information from their file. Tab again. We're going to hit the Enter key. We're going to hit Escape. We are now launching, <clears throat> excuse me, we're now launching the eBiz credit card application where we're pulling information in from the customer file. We're going to select a credit card and submit that. We're sending that down to, to Century Business. And we're going to pre-authorize it. And we're going to select OK. Now, the changes that we made to the billing screen, or to the, to the order entry screen, let's go back over here to the billing screen. And we're going to select the order. Uh, I think it was 381. I hope it is. Yep. 371. Nope. Now I better look it up. See, that's why I have to write all this stuff down. Because I have this horrible memory. I'm getting old. There it is, 321. And by the way, I have bad writing, too. So what we have now is we have all this functionality. And now we want to go... And now we're going to bill all items. The application comes up. We say yes, we want to do that. And again, we've called an application. Process the sale now. And it's done. So using the credit using the credit card application that we that was designed and put in for flexibility for, for eBiz. We've also been able to add some additional functionality using the route function, select, using an email address, uh, ability to show any open items and enter shipping data. Close this. Let's get back to these. Oops, too fast. So basically what we've done here is we've actually shown you how you can use flexibility to enforce business rules integrate business processes that are not inherent in the McCullough system, things that you need to have done that don't necessarily come out of the box. Flexibility allows us, it gives us the tools, and allows us the flexibility, great play on words, flexibility to enhance the system that you currently have. I'm thinking that's probably about it. I haven't eaten up too much of your time, but I have, we wanted to cover we wanted to cover a fair amount of the information without getting into a tremendous amount of detail, but we would like to have your questions. And what we're going to do right now is, um, Greg, do we have any questions from in the box? Or do we, we have, have something we want to open up? <clears throat> we did have a couple okay. questions that came on over chat, so we'll go ahead and cover those. And then uh, we'll go ahead and open up the phone lines as well, and we can have a more open discussion. Um, the first question was a pretty general one, and it was, can Screen Designer be used um, basically to modify any screen in Macola, or are there any limitations? There are some screens that, that can't be modified and can't be changed. 
you will always know when you if you if it's a screen that you can modify by checking the, the uh, modif the, going to the icons at the top of the page. And you'll see the the modify button here. If you don't have these icons, you're not going to you don't have a chance to do that. There's a, there are some screens that can't be modified, not in this manner, not using Screen Designer. All right. Um, another question, kind of, was regarding reporting, and if you make you know modifications and customizations to certain screens. Um, how it, would you be able to incorporate those customizations into uh, reports? Actually, yes, you can. <clears throat> if you recall, when we actually when we actually selected the, the uh, when we selected the uh, fields we wanted to enter, those are existing fields, and we can actually use those fields in reports. But we need to know what to select, and the information is going to be in those fields. For instance, the email uh, the email I think. We got rid of the instructions, but we replaced that with a user-defined field, and we were, were actually able to incorporate that user-defined field in a report if we wanted to do that. Awesome. And then, um, even if the, uh, uh, sorry, Greg, just a quick comment. No, go ahead. Even if, the, even if the fields aren't inherent to Macola, like non-user-defined fields, we could store those in a separate SQL database and then just attach those tables to the reports, and then you can bring in any of the data you need. Awesome. And then um, for a compatibility question. Does flexibility work and screen designer work in progression, ES, 10? Is there any functionality disparity between the various ERP programs? Yeah, Dave, can you take same. that one? You know, they're all the same. As long as it's a Macola screen, either progression or ES, and even in EM10, you can use core ES. RP to pull up those same screens, even though it's being run from kind of EM10 slash Synergy, uh, it's still coming up the core screen. So you still need Macola ES in that instance uh, to run core ERP. So the answer is yes, you can you can use those for both Macola ES and progression. And then how would it work from uh, an upgrade standpoint? If someone was going from progression to, to 10, for example, um, how, how involved of a, of a process is it to then take those same customizations made in Screen Designer and flexibility to the next platform? That's actually pretty easy. Um, it's the same table structure from ES to EM10. Uh, there's a table called Flex Data, and it exists in both. Um, so that's a pretty easy transition. The other, the other transition that, that's more different is um, progression to uh, to ES, um, but those those automatically come over as well in the uh, in the upgrade process. Another question just came through Q and A. Uh, which table um, is the information of the, uh, what table are the new fields stored in? Like, what table are the information in the new field stored? So if you um, you can unhide existing fields when you're on the screen designer that John was showing and some of those uh, those are all fields that are part of the table structure um, usually pull, pull, pull in like user find fields when they go unhide things and so those will already be in the existing table so if you're in the OE order header screen um, those will be in the OE order header table so all these fields here that may not be on that screen now you can add uh, uh, but if they're not, you can just add an entry field, like an email or a route, and those will be stored. Um, you'll have to use flexibility to store those in a separate table. So you have to create your own SQL table and then write to that table. All righty. I am going to go ahead and that's everything that came through on chat. I'm going to go ahead and unmute everyone's phone lines. I just ask if you don't have a question that you self-mute your own phone so we don't get a ton of background uh, background noise. So we should be, uh, phone lines should be open. So if there are any questions that anyone wanted to ask uh, while we have Tim and, and John on the line, now's the time. Don't be shy. Well, it seems as though we don't have any additional uh, additional questions that come in from the um, from the audience. 
So with that being said, John, if we can uh, flip back to the presentation real quick. And then let's get back to the uh, to the last last slide. Uh, I do want to point out that you know if there are any specific business issues that anyone on the phone is is dealing with that they you know have some questions or want to maybe go a deeper dive, um, at by all means reach out to us. Um, you can reach out to me directly, Greg at AtivoConsulting.com, or just email us at info at AtivoConsulting.com. Uh, we'd be happy to kind of have a discussion on, on those items with you and kind of get in a little bit more detail than obviously what we were able to get to today. Um, with that having been said, John, if we can advance it, just one more slide. This is kind of our way of saying thank you for, for attending today. Um, we do really appreciate feedback from everyone, uh, including just ideas and topics that you want to hear. Today's topic actually came from uh, one of an, an attendee from another webinar that kind of thought of this idea and we decided to put it together. So we definitely listen to your feedback and it's really important to us. Um, in addition, uh, you can help us out if there's a vendor that you work with or a customer that you work with that's an absolute nightmare because their systems are all over the place, introduce them to us. We'd be happy to have a conversation with them and see if there's anything we can do for them. And with that having been said, we really appreciate your time today. John, Tim, really want to thank you guys for uh, joining us today and putting together the presentation. Uh, you can see all of the contact information on the slide here. Uh, everyone enjoy the rest of your day and look forward to seeing you again on a future webinar. Take care.